This example problem is going to put together the ideas from both connected objects and inclined planes. So in this problem, we have one block, M1, with a mass of 6 kilograms that's placed on an incline that makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. And there's a second block, M2, with a mass of 4 kilograms that's connected to it by a rope that passes over a massless, frictionless pulley. And we're going to need to figure out what direction block M2 moves, whether it moves up or down, and we're going to find the acceleration of the blocks, and we're going to find the tension in the rope connecting the blocks. So at first this might look like it's obvious. If M1 is 6 kilograms and M2 is 4 kilograms, well 6 kilograms is bigger than 4 kilograms, so that must mean that M1 goes down the ramp and M2 goes up. But we're going to need to look at this, and because M1 is on an incline, we don't look at the full weight of it. Some of its weight is being supported by the incline. The normal force of the incline cancels out some of the weight of M1. And so we're going to need to look at this more carefully and we're going to see that it's the parallel component of the weight of M1 that's going to matter. So the first thing to do is to find the forces. We have M1, we're going to look at the weight of M1. M1 is 6 kilograms. The force of gravity on M1 is 6 times 9.8, 6 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, and we have 58.8 newtons. And just like in the other inclined plane problems, we're going to choose parallel to the ramp and perpendicular to the ramp as our axes. And so I'm going to break this weight into parallel and perpendicular components. So I have the component of the weight that's perpendicular to the ramp, and I have the component of the weight that's parallel to the ramp. And this is my right angle. The ramp makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal, which means that the angle that the weight makes with the perpendicular direction is also 20 degrees. And so I have this parallel component of the weight, and I have this perpendicular component of the weight. The parallel component of the weight is 58.8 times the sine of 20 degrees, which is 20.11 newtons. The perpendicular component of the weight is 58.8 times the cosine of 20 degrees, which is 55.25 newtons. Because block M1 is sliding along the ramp, the forces perpendicular to the ramp must balance. And the only other thing that's pushing perpendicular to the ramp is the normal force. So we have this normal force, and that has to balance out the perpendicular component of the weight. So that normal force is 55.25 newtons. So then I have the tension in the rope that's pulling up the incline. On block M2, I need to calculate its weight. So its weight is 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is 39.2 newtons. And I have the tension in the rope pulling up. It's at this step that we can determine what direction block M2 moves. If we look at M2, it has a weight of 39.2 newtons. There's a force of 39.2 newtons that's trying to pull it down. And if I look at mass M1, what I care about is I care about this parallel component of the weight, which is only 20.11 newtons. And so if I look at this, I have 20.11 newtons that's trying to pull M1 down the ramp, which would pull M2 up. But pulling the opposite direction, I have 39.2 newtons, which is trying to make these objects move this way. And 39.2 newtons is bigger than 20.11 newtons. And so that means that M2 is going to accelerate down, and M1 is going to accelerate up the ramp. Again, we compare these two forces. We compare the parallel component of the weight pulling one direction on the system, and the weight of M2, which is pulling the other direction on the system. So again, M1 accelerates up the ramp, M2 accelerates down. And so I'm going to make the positive direction for each of those objects the direction of the acceleration. Again, this is not what some people would have expected. Because M2 was lighter, they might have thought that it would have to move up. But again, because a lot of the weight of M1 is being balanced out by the ramp, we only have a small force that's trying to pull M1 down the ramp. 
So now to solve this problem, we do this like the other connected object problems. We're going to look at the individual forces acting on each object. And so I'm going to look at the sliding object and I'm going to look at the hanging object. And for the sliding object, all I care about are the forces parallel to the ramp. I'm going to look at the tension and the parallel component of the weight. And so I'm not going to draw the other perpendicular forces on it because those are going to cancel. So for the sliding object, it has a mass of six kilograms. There's the tension in the rope that's pulling it up the ramp. And there's the parallel component of the weight, 20.11 newtons, that's pulling it down the ramp. And we said that it accelerates up the ramp, so I'm going to make up the ramp the positive direction. So like in my other connected object problems, I'm going to look at the individual forces added together. So the net force on the sliding block is the tension acting up the incline, which is the positive direction, and the parallel component of the weight acting down the incline, so that's negative 20.11 newtons. The net force on the sliding block also can be looked at from Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that the net force on the sliding block equals six kilograms times its acceleration. So if I put those two equations together, I have that the tension minus 20.11 newtons equals six kilograms times the acceleration. If I leave off the units, this is going to give me that the tension is going to equal 6A plus 20.11. Now I'm going to look at the hanging block. The hanging block has a mass of 4 kilograms. It's being pulled down by a force of 39.2 newtons. And it's being pulled upward by the tension in the rope T. And again, because the hanging block accelerates down, we're going to make down the positive direction. So again, we look at the individual forces that are acting on the hanging block, the net force on the hanging block. We have the downward force of gravity, but again, down is my positive direction, so this is positive 39.2 newtons. And we have the tension acting up, but up is my negative direction, so I have 39.2 newtons minus the tension. And the net force on the hanging block is 4 kilograms times its unknown acceleration A. Putting those two together, I have that 39.2 newtons minus the tension equals 4 kilograms times the acceleration. So again, if I leave the units off, I have that 39.2 minus T equals 4A. And so we found that T was 6A plus 20.11. So we're going to take this tension and we're going to substitute it in for this tension. So we have that 39.2 minus the quantity 6A plus 20.11 equals 4A. So we need to make sure that we distribute that negative sign we have 39.2 minus 6A minus 20.11 equals 4A. Adding 6A to both sides and subtracting the numbers, we have that 10A equals 19.09 Newtons. So dividing both sides by 10, we get an acceleration of 1.909 meters per second squared. And to calculate the tension, we had the equation that the tension equaled 6 kilograms times A plus 20.11 newtons. And that's what we had found up above. And so we take this acceleration and we substitute it in. And so we have that 6 kilograms times 1.909 meters per second squared plus 20.11 newtons is the tension. So 6 times 1.909 is 11.454. So we have 11.454 newtons plus 20.11 newtons. And so we get that the tension in the rope is 31.564 newtons. And so now to double check ourselves, 
we have this tension pulling up the incline, this 31.564 newtons, and we have this parallel component of the weight down the incline, this 20.11 newtons. Again, since 31.5 is bigger than 20.11, that agrees with the fact that the block M1 is going to accelerate up the incline. And again, looking at M2, we have 39.2 newtons pulling down. We have 31.56 newtons pulling up. 39 is bigger than 31, and so that agrees with the fact that M2 accelerates downward. So for these modified Atwood machine problems where one block is on an incline, you have to be a little bit more careful. You can't just look at what block is heavier to figure out what direction they're going to move. You have to take the weight of the object that's on an incline, you have to break it into components. So anytime we're looking at something that's sliding along an incline, we're always interested in the parallel component of the weight. And that's going to be the part that determines what direction it moves, how big the acceleration is, and that's what comes up in all the problems as we look at them. Again, a problem like this puts together the ideas that we've been looking at. It involves connected objects, it involves inclined planes, and it's putting all of these ideas together in one big problem. With this, if you have trouble understanding the inclined plane part, I would go back and review all of the problems with the setup of objects on an inclined plane. If you have trouble setting up the equations for the connected objects, I would go back and review that and look at that a little bit more. Once you understand both of those ideas, you can see that this just puts all those ideas together in one problem.